Good evening, and uh, this is CTV. We interrupt your regular programming to bring this special edition, a conversation with the Electoral Commission to understand what they're doing, especially when it comes to verification at a number of levels. And we will be hearing uh, exactly what that is about. We're glad that you're joining us for this conversation. I am Iguma Gabriel, uh, who will be uh, hosting somebody from the Electoral Commission. Now, the Electoral Commission is preparing uh, for the Women Council and the committee elections at the village to the national level. The last time these elections happened was in 2018, and the office bearers, the current office bearers term is coming to an end, which means that the EC has got to prepare for elections for new office bearers. The last time these elections happened, a number of issues did not go as planned. For example, there were discrepancies on names of villages, boundaries of villages, where they start, where they end. The Electoral Commission is determined not to have such issues this time round. And that's why they're engaging you and I. That's why they bring us this information so that we know how exactly these elections are going to run so that the verifications are done early uh, in the day uh, to avoid such uh, mishaps. Joining us is Mr. Suve Richard. He is a senior election officer, uh, I believe, from the Communications Department of the Electoral Commission. Yes, my brother. Yes, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Daniel Guma, uh, for sort of hosting me and also uh, allowing the Electoral Commission to interact and engage the public in regard to the on, uh, to the forthcoming ele elections. Um, since we held elections in uh, the general elections, people at times ask in us. 2021. Yes, in people, the minds of people, in the minds of the people, yes. electoral commission comes to us once in five years. <laughs> True. So, <laughs> and uh, that's that's what they think. And, yeah. um, so, uh, but I want to um, first of all dispel uh, the, 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 that kind of perception that uh, it's not true that uh, electoral commission organizes on elections, the general elections and then we go back and sleep. Uh, we always have elections. For example, after the, the general elections, we had by-elections mm. at local government levels to make sure that all vacancies that had not been filled during, during the general elections were filled. And all the, the, the leaders are in those offices. So after that, uh, now we have come back to make sure that we conduct, we organize, conduct, and supervise the elections uh, of the women councils and committees, and also the administrative unit elections. That's for the LC1 and LC2s. No oh, right. Yes, sir. You have you had in my introduction that uh, the time these elections happened in twenty yeah, true, true. Um, there were a few issues. Uh, and we'd like to know, you know, what you learned from that and how you're rectifying it. Uh, yeah, thank process. you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, when we held the elections in 2018, it, we had taken a long, uh, 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 some, some time, I think close to... About to, 17, um, 17 to 18 years. To 18 years. Yeah. So as we, we, after those elections, after 2018, we realized there were so, so many issues that had to be resolved. So this time around, we've come to make sure that such issues are ironed out before we start the conduct of the elections. First of all, these elections, like you said, they were held in 2018. So by law, the tenure or the term of office for the women councils and, the commit and the committees will expire in August 2022, this very year. Then for the LC1 and LC2s, it will exp expire next year. 
2023 in August. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that these elections are held between July and August this very year for the women councils and committees. But like you have asked, what did we learn? We learned because these elections are progressive from village to the national level, the, the women councils and committees. Now, since these elections are held, the, the village is the smallest unit, is the smallest polling station. We have come back to verify these administrative unit um, um, structures mm. from the villages. Because we've, we realize now, for, for instance, by the time we held those elections in 2018, there were so many villages that were not legally uh, placed. They didn't have statutory instruments. There are so many villages that had um, boundary disputes. There are so many villages that were wrongly placed. For instance, a village is uh, placed in a, a, a certain parish, eh? yet physically it belongs to parish X. And then you also, we also found out that there are so many villages, not in, only villages, but the administrative units, even up to the uh, um, uh, district level, there were so many administrative units uh, that were found or that are placed in gazetted areas, government gazetted areas, forest, like forests, wetlands. The, the best example I can give is the upper, upper forest. You know that dispute. The Badis claim mm. that it's theirs. The Acholis claim it's theirs. The National Forest Authority claims no one's supposed to be there. But people are living in, in such places. So as a commission, we've come to make sure that we verify and rectify those disputes before we conduct elections. Let's first iron out, let's first harmonize these structures so that between July and August of this year, before we conduct the election of uh, women councils and committees, all these structures are harmonized. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the disputes. That's the, the challenges we faced the other time. The other time we did not do the verification. This time we've done the verification to make sure that we do that, uh, the, the harmonization process is, is complete. All right. So that we don't have issues of people, you know, claiming I'm placed in a wrong village, uh, this village does not exist. And then too, I think there are so many of these structures that are not in, when, when you look at the different databases of the government ministries, you find the electoral commission has a different number of villages, structures. Yeah. National Planning Authority has a different number of structures. Villages, sub counties, parishes. And, and that's what I was going to come and ask you because yes. where does the discrepancy come from? How can Electoral Commission have mm. a village stated in a different way and probably on the ground mm. uh, they have it differently? And now you're telling me even National Planning Authority may have it differently. Even at district level, mm. you may find we have a different database. Um, in, uh, then uh, the, 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 the database reads differently and then. Uh, when you go to the district, the local governments, they have a different number of units. When you go to the, to the planner, district planner, he also has, he or she has a different number of structures. Now, this comes up in a way. Hmm. Electoral Commission does not create administrative units. That's a preserve of the Minister of Local Government. And it's a process. Now, you find that uh, the villagers, the villagers, people, members of a certain village will sit and make a resolution, either to split a village or to combine it or to rename it. Now, that, such resolutions are, also, are forwarded to the parish, mm. the council. Then the parish is also, also going to forward to, to the sub-county progressively. Now, if that process is not complete and the minister of local government has not endorsed such structures, it means that the people on the ground, are going, they think what they propose is operational. Now to us, since we, don't get, we didn't get the instrument from local government minister, the minister of local government, um, gazetting this village or parish, for, to us it's not existent. Well, but to, on the ground, people know this, we sat mm. and they agreed yes. that our village uh, is in existence or we split it. So such things happen. Then too, there are villages that are phased out for different reasons. Um, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like I said, a village can be combined. Maybe the population is not so big. 
and then they combine two villages. Now, when they combine those two villages, for us in our structure, unless we get that instrument as electoral commission, that this process was done and it was complete and the minister um, gazetted or put a statutory instrument um, allowing it to operationalize. If we don't get it, you find the other two villages are in existence on ground, but for us, we don't have it. So such discrepancies can happen. Now, one of the reasons as to why we've come, and this verification is very important for all ministries, agencies, and even uh, the local governments, because now we've, got, we've gone down to the local people, the, mini, uh, the, the local government leaders, and even the, the population, and we are taking to them our database. Mm. This is what Electoral Commission has. So we are going to deal with the cows, the, the, the town clerks, uh, the SAS, the senior assistant um, secretaries at the district level, um, the district planners. This, we are going to give them our list. This is what we have. So what do you have? So that we compare, we harmonize. And then the locals are also going to tell us, mm. you know, this village here is, co is called CTV village with C, with S, S double, double E. e. Yes. Not only letter C, because some people can, once they say C, they may say it's called C with the letter C, CTV. So, <coughs> sorry. So once we go to the ground, we shall get the facts. And when we get the facts, we shall harmonize with the local governments and also with the Ministry of Local Government. And we, sh we are going to share that database, the so final the, list yeah. with all the ministries. When there's a discrepancy, yes. whose uh, you know, position do you go with? Because like you said, yes. at the village, the people yes. may know that, no, 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 mm. we change things in this way. Yes. We created a new village here, mm. or we combine. Yes. You know, if you find that there's a discrepancy between what they have on the ground and what is, for example, at the district level mm. or at uh, the ministry level, yes. whose position do we is take? the superior one? Yes, which one now, do you take? What makes a village or a parish, any administrative unit, um, legally binding is when the ministry mm. has gazetted it, has endorsed it, has put an instrument. Uh, or allowing it to operationalize. Now, when we go on ground and find that there's a village called CTV village, people know it. Then we shall get back to the cow and the district planners and ask them, there's a village people claim mm. is in existence, but does it have, did it go through the processes up to the ministry? Yes. Did the ministry endorse it? Now, once that village is not either a parish, a village, or a sub-county, once it's created mm -hmm. and the minister or the ministry has not gazetted it and endorsed it, then we shall not, we shall not take it to be a village or okay. an administrative unit. Then, now, now the people on the ground yes. know it differently. So how do they get to know now, that the position they have is, is wrong? Yes. Now, that's what we are doing. Now, we've gone back to them. Because we are not only engaging the local leaders, mm. we are engaging the public. Okay. Now, once we go to the different local, lower levels, we are going to harmonize. And then after we shall display. We have a display uh, period at the district and the different sub-counties. Okay. That these are the number of administrative units that we have as per this time and have been harmonized. All right. Now... Mm. The people are the ones going to tell us also that it's true, yes, the cow has endorsed this, but we had, pro we had proposed ABCD. Now, when we engage them, they, also get, they will know that one, the process was not complete. Two, maybe they just sat and um, had a conversation, and after that they thought the village had been created. Mm or merged, or something of, the, of a sort. And yet they had to uh -huh. have minutes, they have deliver have those be, minutes uh -huh. somewhere. So it's us now, to send, us and the electoral commission, and then the local government people, to sensitize the, the people that, look, this is what took place. This is what is on the ground. These villages, because now we have villages that were created after 
9th of April 2021. Those ones are not going to be considered. We're going to come to that one. Yes, sir. Uh, it can be a bit controversial. We'll yes. come to it. Just to understand, so when do you plan to start this verification? Yes. And uh, what do you expect the people to be doing? Uh, you know, when you come out there to, you know, because uh, mm. they may uh, think you already finished, they may be waiting for you to come and they yes. don't know when you're coming to them. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, we've already mobilized uh, the, the stakeholders. We had a national workshop where we called upon all regional, uh, sorry, national leaders, uh, all stakeholders at national level. Then um, uh, last week, we went to the regions, the different 12 regions as map mapped out by the Electoral Commission. And we also called all the stakeholders. We took them through what we are going to do. Mm. The verification exercise started on 17th mm. of March. And it's going to end on 20, 26th of March, this very, this, very ma this very month. So it means Are those that enough days? They are enough. They are enough. We are not registering people. We are just dealing with admin units. We have villages that are known. Now, after that, because now already we have started engaging the local leaders, mm. opinion leaders, and then we are telling them this is what we have. Now, we are going to display the lists from 11th of April to 20th of April. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the display exercise. Now, once we, dis once we start that display, it means that people are going to come in large numbers mm. and scrutinize, yeah. look at the final product. It's not the final, but the final product as, as the harmonized one. But they're also going to make, put queries. This village here does not exist. It phased out. But I'm still seeing it here. It has been endorsed by that. Because for us, each list that we take to them, the list that we've taken to them, they are going to take to endorse by taking each and every admin unit. But now, the population that will start querying, no. This village here should not be removed because it belongs to Parish X. This village here has been wrongly named. This village here, yes, it exists, but does not have minutes. It was placed by a certain ABCD, a big politician or something like that. So we think the period is good enough okay. for, for the population and then the leaders All right. to harmonize. All right, let's come back to the ones that you had mentioned, that category of uh, the ones created after uh, yes. April of 2021. Yes. What's yes. unique about those? Uh, it's very unique because uh, the Ministry um, of uh, Local Government um, um, advised that all administrative units, there's no more creation of mm. new administrative units. Now that's from village onwards to districts. Now, but in one way or the other, there are those that have been created for one reason or the other. Now, those ones, because the ministry, because for us we don't, we don't have that mandate, mm. once the ministry has directed, for us that's what we go with. So the ministry directed that all administrative units that, have been, that are created after 9th um, of April 2021 are not going to be considered. Because that, they had put that, that bar, okay, there is no more creation. So those that have been created after, yes, they are there. But for us as a commission, we are not going to consider them because we are working with that directive mm. that, that had been issued by the ministry. So what does this mean for the people on the ground? If the new ones are not going to be considered, what should they take it as? That uh, they still belong to where they belong? Yes, in? they still belong to the old villages, mm. the old settings that they had. And it also, it only takes sensitization. Okay. Because once you sensitize people and let them know, give them knowledge, you know, the biggest problem we have is the knowledge gap. Some people do so many things because they are not informed. But we are on the ground to let them know okay. that, yes, this village was proposed, this parish was, was proposed, and it was split from the original one, but uh, it came at a time after the ministry had directed ABCD. Now, you wait for okay. the next, um, uh, next round of elections. But right, right now... We are dealing with the old settings that we, the villages, the parishes we had before, after 
no, before the creation, before the, that we are created before the, the 9th of April 2021. All right, Richard, all this is being done in preparation for elections. Could you just tell us a bit about those elections and when they expected? Yeah, thank you very much. Now, after the verification, we believe that um, the ground will be set. Now, like I said, we have elections for the women councils and committees. Mm -hmm. Now, the women are going to elect among themselves. What are these, the village committees? Yes. Okay. Uh, they are going to elect among themselves leaders that are going to progress up to national level. But now, what makes you qualify to participate in these elections? One, you have to be a Ugandan. Mm. You have to be a woman, aged 18 years and above. And you have to be a resident of that very place, of that very village. You, not where you are born, but where you reside. Yes, you can be born from that very place and then you, you reside from that very place. But then we consider residence. You have to be a resident of that place and then willing. So we are going to, set, to send registers for people, for women who are willing. You're going to send registers? Yes. Okay. Register books. After we have harmonized the... You're going to send register books. So people are going to register yes, for these are particular... Yes, are fresh. So they should not go with, you know, I voted in the general election. Yes. I know where I voted from and yes. that's where I'm going to vote. And this is for a few reasons. One, uh, general elections are different from administrative elections by law. We cannot use the other ones. But then, they are those that, you remember, we had a cutoff. Um, Yes, there was a cut-off date, uh, you know, for, for, by which for you should people, have registered. For those who wanted yes. to register to, to for register, the general, yes. to vote in the general election. We had election. a cut-off date. Now, in between, from that time and now, there are so many girls who have become women. Mm. In terms, they have made 18 years. So you cannot say that you're using the old register, which means you're going to disenfranchise most of these young girls who have just made, made 18. Okay. So, and then two, we shall be forcing people to participate in elections. You know, elections are optional for you to participate. So if I pick a register, the general elections register, and then I put your name on the register, on, on the village register as a woman, and you're not willing, there's something I'm infringing on your rights. So we've opened up, we are going to send register books. Now, each and every woman, who feels they want to participate in the elections as voters or as candidates are going to go physically. All right. And they are registered. This is only for the women. Only for the women. But for the verification process, even the men can participate. For the verification, everyone participates. All right. Okay. Because now we are trying to, to harmonize. Okay. Yeah. Richard, we have to hold it there because we need to take a break at this point. But after the break, we will put a few more questions to the Electoral Commission so that we understand this verification process and the elections that are coming uh, at uh, that level. Please stay tuned because we return after these messages. journey to realize our full potential we all need expanded minds and limitless possibilities we need to be accurately informed ctv is your growth partner with reliable in-depth news we tell the story from all perspectives we bring you the story in real time catch our comprehensive daily bulletins in juba egorodie at 7 p.m and p.m edition at 9 p.m CTV. Don't blink.
now showing on CTV. Start your day fresh with TV unlike anything you've seen before. Wake up with Sunrise at Sea for your daily dose of freshly cut stories, trending online discussions, self-care and constructive conversations. No topic is off limits. Watch Sunrise at Sea every weekday at 7am. Now showing on CTV. Don't blink. Every time it clocks 11 a.m. on CTV, we bring you the only certified morning party, the branch request. So I would love to listen to everything. Sing you, put your hands, go work. If you believe it, say amen. If you believe it, say amen. I would like to listen to the talk by Poppy. Shiba. Yes. <laughs> now showing on CTV. Don't blink. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us for this special broadcast here on CTV. We're looking at the verification of administrative units and uh, preparatory activities for the women and women councils and the committees and also the administrative unit elections. Well, our guest is from the Electoral Commission. Uh, Mr. Suve Richard is uh, a senior election officer uh, the communications department of the electoral commission and today he's giving us information about this verification process in the first segment we talked about verification largely why this verification process is taking place how exactly it's going to happen and we'd segued into talking about the elections themselves because this verification is happening in preparation for uh, the elections i just mentioned and he's made it clear that uh, the first set of elections is uh, for the women councils and the committees. But the verification, everybody can and should participate in the verification. I think something else that's uh, very important to uh, remind the viewer, or for those who probably joined after you had said it, is the fact that the registers that will be used are not the ones for the general elections. So the Electoral Commission will be sending through uh, registration books, yes, right? Yes, true. Uh, and it is based on the registration that takes place at that point that uh, you know these elections will be conducted. But you haven't said anything about the candidates. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I also still want to emphasize, mm. um, for you to participate in these elections, you have to register afresh. And you have to register in our register books, mm. the ones we are going to avail. Um, what will people use to register? Um, that's, what I, that's what I was coming to. Okay. Now, for you to be eligible or mm -hmm. to, to qualify, like I said, if you are a woman, um, you're, you're supposed to be 18 years and above, then a, uh, a citizen of Uganda, then a resident of that place, and then willing. But then you should have, ID, first of all, you should have a national ID um, or card as one of the identifiers or any other document that identifies you as a woman, 
and as one who has made 18 years and above. Uh, because we have, we have those, because we have voters' cards, we have, uh, sorry, we have uh, voter, voter location slip cards for those who participated in elections. Those are the things that, those are documents that replace the voters' card. Then we have a national ID, we have other documents, academic documents, any other documents that will identify you as a woman now for the women committees and councils. Then when it comes to elections of LC1s and LC2s, still for those who will be, who will be 18 years, mm -hmm. both male and female, you should come for you to register. You should convince the village um, election officer that I am 18 years and above and I'm ready, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm fit to participate in these elections. So those are the few identifiers, the national ID, the voter location slip, the, those who have registered with NIRA but they don't have their national ID, uh, uh, we have the registration uh, ID number. Um, and so there's, those are the things that can really uh, qualify you to, re to register, uh, to qualify to register in that, in that book. Mm. Yes. And then uh, for the candidates, because those are for the people who are going to vote. Uh, yes. Now for the candidates, one, um, for you to be a candidate, mm. you must have registered. That's, that's the basic. And uh, if you are a candidate, for the women councils and committees, you must be a woman, first of all. You must be a resident of that place. We don't have any academic qualifications that we shall require. We shall not require any nomination fees. Uh, we shall give you the nomination papers, you look through, and then you will be supported on, on, on nomination day by two people. Those, they have to be women still. And members of that committee, all those who have already also registered in that book. And um, f if you've come on a um, political party ticket, you should have an endorsement from that political party. They should have endorsed you. What I want to emphasize, and I want to emphasize it in capital letters, if you have come on ticket of party X at village level, and then you want to, to also compete at parish level or ward level, do not say that I was given a, f a flag for the village. But, ex, uh, but right now I want to go independent. The, mm. If you came as an independent, you should go throughout. That's if you want to progress up to national level. Or at any level that you wish, you may wish, beyond a village. If you came on a party ticket, you should not change allegiance. Mm. That, no, 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 no. Now I, I was, I'm independent, but right now I feel I think I can belong to a certain party. So what, once you start, what you start with is what you will end up with. All right. Yes. If I remember correctly, the last time we had these elections in 2018, the voting was by lining up behind True. your preferred yes. candidate. Yes. Uh, has the Electoral Commission, uh, do you know how this voting is going to happen? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. The voting is going to be by, still by lining up behind your preferred candidate. Now, the constitution is very clear. It gives us those two methods of voting or of electing our leaders. Mm. You can either use a separate ballot, a method, or you can line up. Now, because due to financial constraints, uh, the, 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 the government is constrained financially. So the limited resource envelope that they gave us could not allow us to conduct uh, this election through a, a separate ballot. But since they also the Constitution gives us a leeway that in case of anything, you can always use that method of lining up. People are going to line up uh, behind their preferred candidates. Now, it's to, it's, um, if a candidate is present, they're going to line up behind the candidate. In case the candidate cannot make it, your agent, the candidate's agent, will be will line up and then people will line behind that person. Uh, if both of them are not around, for one reason or the other, we shall use the portrait. 
and people will line up behind that portrait. Now, I've always told people, everything has the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. People have always complained about ballot staffing, you know, so many things, invalid votes. Now, for lining up, you are sure that I've won or I've been won. Because numbers don't lie. Mm. You look behind... Some people looked you. behind themselves and yeah. almost collapsed. Yes. Now, there you know, it has, it has its disadvantages. It brings some kind of, kind of hatred and mm. uh, in families. Because you know who voted you and who yes, didn't. Because even then, the choice that someone makes may, may, may be compromised. Because if, if I'm your brother and you don't want to vote for me, mm. it's not easy for you to stand behind... My, a, a candidate of your choice mm -hmm. and then you leave me as your brother but then it's also good in a way that it there's is accountability there's is accountability so people are going to line behind the, the, the candidates um, of, of their choice and um, we shall have a brief because we shall have some kind of brief meeting on the day of voting mm -hmm. since it's not a secret ballot where someone comes and goes we shall have we shall have some kind of voter education in the morning, then at around around eleven something. Yeah. Yes. People. Mm. Mm. Voter education quite important because yes. uh, quite often uh, the electoral commission has come under criticism for yes. not you know educating the mm. public on a number of things to do with these elections because <laughs> yes. they're they're actually different from the general elections. Mm. For example, right now we are talking about the mode. Yes. of electing. Earlier on, we spoke about, mm -hmm. you know, the registration and yes. how it, yes. And therefore, what's your plan for the voter education? Because also you remember mm -hmm. that uh, the 2018 elections, what, one of the issues was that the turnout was mm -hmm. quite low in comparison to what was expected. 2021 elections, the turnout wasn't that low. 2018, 20, 2018, uh, the uh, LC the elections. LC, yes. yes. Now, the, it was the first time, for the first time after 17 years, 18, mm. we are conducting an election. It was new to everyone, even us somehow. We are still learning. That's why we didn't have the verification process the other time. This time we have it, because we learned lessons. Now, when it comes to voter education, mm. um, I'm a voter educator myself, and I work in public relations. We deal with stakeholders. There are people who are not going to listen to you, even right now. Whole question, but the, the, the elections for LC1 and in 2023, what's the electoral commission telling us right now? And they're going to do their own things. Now, when it comes to elections, the day, the voting process, mm. um, the, the processes when they start of registration and what people are going to shun, they will, they're going to tell you. Because let me give you an example, um, Mr. Iguma. Some people will tell us that I am called in Super Richard. My father is alive. He's known. My grandfather, grandfather, we are buried there. This is my village. Why are you telling me to register in the book? Mm. Yet even my book appears in your in your my national name voters, in register. Your voters register. And yes. they're they not going to 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 register in the in the in the, in the books that we've, we are going to avail. Now, when it comes to when the pressure mounts and you know the the, the campaign start and then people start feeling the heat, that's when they will start to gain some kind of interest. But I, I think I can also vote mm. for so-and-so. I think I can also contest as a candidate. We, I cannot say our voter education and publicity is 100%, but we've also talked to people who have given us deaf ears. Then too, commission does not work in isolation. It's the reason we're here. It's the reason we mobilize the media, the, 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 the political parties, and, um, and security. You know, there are so many stakeholders that we have, observers, so that even voters, so that they keep on helping us. Because whatever I tell someone right now, mm. that information is not supposed to stop to the person who has watched me or who has heard. It's not supposed to stop with you. It's supposed to. You're supposed to tell it, another person will tell, tell another person. But um, we are improving. Every election cycle, we keep on learning something. And then we say, okay, how do we do this? Maybe we're talking to people who are not interested. How do we interest them? You get it? Now, we are learning so many things, but the voter education is okay. 
and uh, we think that if people are interested, if they put, give us that interest in these elections, the turnout will be high. But I also wanted to emphasize something. These elections, the women elections, mm. they are progressive. We are electing the chairperson, the vice chairperson, uh, the secretary, then uh, the publicity secretary, and then the secretary uh, finance. That's at village level. Now, they are going to progress. We shall, they will be also elected at parish level. Now, when it comes to, to, to the district, we shall have secret ballot voting. Because now the resources are there, those are not very many, mm. up to national level. Okay. It will be by secret ballot from the district. And then at, at um, sub-county level, we shall have only four offices that we shall elect. That will be the chairperson, uh, the, the vice chairperson, the publicity, and uh, finance. The secretary to that, um, to that uh, committee will not be voted. Uh, it just comes in automatically. And then uh, we shall also have a woman, um, I, I, I have to be very careful, when I, with a disability. Mm. Uh, um, women with disabilities, will, someone will be proposed through their structures to come and be part of that committee from some county level to district level. Okay, just for clarity, the voting of the people, the people who will register in the books that you avail True. will vote only at the first level? Uh, or will they vote at other levels as well? No. You vote, ah, okay. Like I said progressively, for instance, if we have four villages that make up a parish, now those four villages are going to elect five. We shall have a register. Each of them will have women who, have, who are willing. They are going to register. Now, those women at village level, are going to elect from amongst themselves five leaders. Now, those five leaders are going to progress. Each village is going to give us five. Now, they are, they are going to convene at the parish level. When they convene, electoral commission is going to generate a register. They become now voters. Now, amongst themselves, they are also going to elect themselves. For, um, they are going to elect five. Mm. From each of the parishes, now, in the sub-county, now, those are also going to progress. Now, once you uh, elected as a leader, you become a voter at a certain level mm -hmm. and also a candidate. Now, wh whoever stayed at village level will not come and participate. Mm -hmm. Those who progress as a candidate and uh, um, um, office bearers, they are going to convene at, at the upper level, the form. Um, a, a committee, a, a, sorry, a council. Then that council are going to will elect amongst themselves a committee. Now that committee also progresses. They convene somewhere. They become a council uh, the, the, or, or the electorate. Then so wh whoever is left down does not participate in the next level. In the next level. All right. Yes. Yep. Earlier on, you mentioned that uh, you know uh, you had found. Uh, that uh, some of these villages were in gazetted areas, yes. wetlands, forests, and what have you. What's the fate of those ones? Uh, it's the reason we have gone uh, to the ground to verify. Now, we shall get guidance from the relevant uh, authorities. Mm. Like I said, it's not our mandate as Electoral Commission to create. Uh, so whatever has been given to us, and it has, a statutory instrument from the ministry. Now, those that have still, still have disputes, and uh, because you may have, you may find they have the statutory instruments, but then they are still, uh, you know, uh, saying um, they, they are Madis, they are Cholis, then the forestry, National Forest Authority is saying they are not supposed to be there. We shall give them that time to harmonize. If they don't, and they don't have, if they have the statutory instrument, we shall first use that. If the Ministry of Local Government says we have never issued, and then they're not supposed to be there, then I think they will have to go back and, and assimilate or, or go to the different villages where they came, because they just came to that place from somewhere. 
as long as we are guided by the local government, the ministry, and then the people, we, shall not, we, we cannot say that, no, 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 as the electoral commission, these people should be there. As the electoral commission, these people should live. For us, we shall go by the guidance that will be given to us by the ministry, both uh, the local government, uh, ministry, and then other relevant authorities. All right. Yes. We need to start bringing this to a close. You had, uh, you mentioned some of the shortfalls in the yes. previous uh, election in 2018. Yes. Uh, you know, as as reading and uh, part of the things that were brought to the EC were the fact that, or oh, the claim that uh, the registration of the candidates, you know, uh, EC could have done better on that. How are you ensuring that this time, even at the registration of candidates, mm. who qualifies to be a candidate, mm. uh, you know, is transparent, it's clear, mm. because some people attributed the overwhelming, you know, NRIM representation mm. at, uh, you know, the village level uh, to the registration uh, of candidates process. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, is that in regard to the general elections or the 2018? No, 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 no. The 2018. Uh, uh, now, like I said, I also I want to emphasize that election was a, bit, was a baby to us and a baby to everyone. There are so many things that we learned. You find even the NRM you're talking about also had some shortfalls. Someone was elected as a flag bearer through their process. Uh, and once they won, they didn't want to participate in the elections that were, because if someone comes and uh, the, what we call Kamiofo, they did their party elections, and someone, someone is voted as the chairperson, for them they would think, I am now the chairperson, there is no need to... Now, instead of them <laughs> yeah. coming to compete with other people, they, they, said, they said, no, we cannot participate because I... They already I, won. I, yes, I mm. campaigned and people gave me the votes. So, so many of them didn't participate in these elections. Some of the, some of the people were even very wise. They would come to you, ah, ah, Amze, don't worry. People voted for you. This one, ah, don't come. For you, your thing is done. <laughs> Others would even tell you, but for you, you're too smart to participate in this LC1. We want you at LC2. So don't you, register, you wait, don't don't register mm, here. You register the other <laughs> one. And yet this thing is progressive. <laughs> yes. So people would come at LC2. No, I see I'm where are you? Did you participate? No. So there was some kind of information gap. And then some guys were a bit sharp. Mm. This time what we've done, the registration is as open. We are, we've publicized. Okay. We've engaged political parties. We've engaged stakeholders, the media, so that this information is disseminated to the last person. Now, if political parties can also help us, and the local leaders, because we have opinion leaders that we've engaged at lower levels, even national level. Okay. If they could help us to pass on this information mm. so that people don't, are not hoodwinked. You know, there are so many sharp people around. And you know, politics, it's about the mind. Someone comes and then, you know, confuses you with a few things here and there, and then you, you either go off All right. or something like that. All right. But the Electoral Commission is urging, we want to urge people to come on board. These are leaders that you see every day, that you deal with every day. They know your problems. Mm. They know who you are. Do not take these elections for granted because the immediate person you run to is the else one chair person mm. or the Nabachala, the ones who call Nabachala. If you have domestic issues, a woman can easily run to her or to that yeah. committee. For so guidance. Should, yeah. So these are people that are very dear to us. Let's not just say, ah, uh ah, -uh, we have election fatigue. Okay. Because we've had some people say, we have election fatigue. Okay. Or they think, ah, -uh, but why is the electoral corruption disturbing us? For us, we cook and we have brought the plate for you to make sure that you eat the food. Please partake of this food, enjoy it, and make sure that COVID you observe the soaps. All right. Yes. So that this does not become a problem. Well, yes. there you are. You have had the information from the Electoral Commission, particularly Mr. Nsube Richard, uh, a senior election 
uh, election officer at the EC. He's challenged you. Now that you have the information, pass this information on to somebody else so that as many as possible can participate in uh, these elections at the village and various levels. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned because after this, our PM edition news comes and you don't want to miss it. From me and uh, Mr. Nsube, it is a good night.